They say the stars are untouchable, but what if I told you there was a girl who could reach out and steal them? And that each one she took whispered her name, calling her to something dark she'd never escape. The beginning of the shadows late one night, Mira sat on her bedroom windowsill, staring up at the sky. The stars glimmered above like distant diamonds, but she felt they were too close, almost like they were staring back at her. She whispered their names, ones she had read in dusty old books, Polaris, Beetlejuice, Vega, and each one flickered, as if answering her call. Then, her hand tingled with a strange pull. Without knowing why, Mira reached out, stretching her fingers toward the sky and a glowing star detached itself, floating down into her hand. It wasn't hot or heavy, just a cool, pulsing orb of light. A thrill shot through her. She'd taken a piece of the night, but in her palm, the star's light dimmed, flickering erratically, and Mira swore she heard it murmur her name in a voice soft as the wind but cold as ice. The sound sent a chill through her bones. Still, she wasn't scared. Not then. The first sign Mira held the star all night, unable to let it go. In the morning, she placed it in an old jar on her bedside table, watching its fading light as if it were alive. That night, she tried it again, and another star came down just as the first had. She added it to the jar, thrilled by her power. But as she slept, shadows began to gather at her window, faint but unmistakable. A heavy silence settled around her room, broken only by a soft, echoing whisper. One by one, you're calling us. Mira sat up, her heart hammering. She saw nothing out her window, only the dark, vast night. But when she glanced at her jar, the stars inside glowed dimly, like eyes watching her. The price of a star the next day, Mira felt oddly tired. Her head ached, and her hand, the one that had touched the stars, tingled with a dull, aching pain. Her mother asked if she was feeling all right, and Mira shrugged it off, though a strange shadow lingered just out of her sight. That night, unable to resist, she reached out for another star. This time, it was even easier as if the star was eager to come to her. She placed it in the jar, feeling a rush of excitement. But as she lay back down, her room felt colder than ever, the shadows thicker, almost pressing against her. A whisper echoed again, clearer this time. You belong to us now. Myra's heart raced, but her curiosity was stronger than her fear. She thought she heard footsteps, soft as whispers, pacing just outside her door. Haunted by shadows the next day, strange things started happening. Her reflection in the mirror seemed off, her eyes darker, her skin pale and drawn. The jar with the stars had turned a faint, sickly green, and the stars inside seemed to pulse like a heartbeat. By nightfall, the urge to steal another star was overwhelming, like a hunger gnawing at her. She knew it was wrong, that something was shifting in her. But Mira was entranced, compelled by a force she couldn't understand. So, she stole a fourth star. But this time, when she held it in her hand, she felt a cold, painful sensation that shot through her veins, like icy fingers gripping her. And as she dropped the star into the jar, she heard it again, louder, closer. You can't escape us, Mira. Shadows thickened in her room, crawling up the walls, stretching toward her. She tried to back away, but a chill spread from her hand to her arm, rooting her to the spot. She swore she saw eyes in the darkness, watching her, waiting. The curse revealed desperate. Mira ran to an old woman in her village, a recluse who is said to know the old stories, the ones about things best left alone. When she told her story, the old woman's face paled. Those stars you stole, they weren't stars. They were souls. Souls trapped for eternity, caged in the night sky. By taking them, you've stolen pieces of the night's curse, and now they want what's theirs. 
Myra's skin went cold as she remembered the voices whispering her name. She looked down at her hand, now a shade paler than the rest of her skin, and the jar with its faintly glowing orbs. Is there a way to return them? She whispered, her voice trembling. The old woman shook her head. The night doesn't forgive, but there may be a way to appease it. You must place the stars back where you found them and offer something in return, something of equal value. The final night Mira returned home, clutching the jar, her heart racing. She tried to sleep, but as midnight approached, she heard whispers around her bed, voices she now recognized, the voices of those souls she had stolen. When the clock struck midnight, Mira climbed out her window, the jar held tightly in her trembling hands. She whispered apologies to each star as she lifted it to the sky, watching as it drifted back to its place. But with each star she released, her body grew weaker, colder, as if each star was taking a piece of her soul with it. When she returned the final star, her legs buckled, and she collapsed onto the ground. The shadows around her began to shift, pulling away, but one last voice lingered. There is one price left to pay. As Mira looked up, the night seemed to draw closer, pressing in on her until all she could see was darkness. Her last breath caught in her throat as she felt herself fading, the night claiming her piece by piece. The morning after. Myra's mother found her empty room the next morning, her bed cold, her window open. There was no sign of Mira, only the empty glass jar on her bedside table. And that night, if you looked closely enough, you might see a new star shining faintly in the sky, a star that seemed to flicker in a way that almost looked like it was calling someone's name.